quality and cost, making digital manufacturing at scale a reality. We're already seeing repeat orders that we just expanded into APJ, the world's largest manufacturing market. Now we have more than 45 partners globally, as well as 20 reference and experience centres around the world. Two weeks ago, I met with Johnson & Johnson, one of our core initial strategic partners, who showed me a 3D, printing, a 3D printed part that they produced, that they use in back surgeries. And I think I have it here. Take a look at this thing. This is a spinal spacer. I hope you never get to encounter one of these things. Heading into a surgery today, the doctor requires hundreds of different sized spinal spacers. They select a part that is the best fit and then dispense with the rest of them, which is really incredible waste. But now, they're 3D printing bespoke spaces specifically for the patient and coating our product with a special product that they make, a nanocrystalline compound that makes it safe to be directly inserted into the human body. In traditional manufacturing, this is a six-piece assembly. Now, with 3D printing, it's just one single perfect part. No waste, perfect fit, form, and function. And it has the potential to drastically reduce cost, reduce inventory, waste, and most importantly, improve the patient outcome. And that's just one example. Building hands-on 3D practices is a huge opportunity to disrupt manufacturing and entire industries. And none of our, sec uh, none of our success across personal systems, printing, or 3D printing is possible without all of you, our channel partners. You deliver incredible innovation and value for our mutual customers. Together, we now have three consecutive quarters of double-digit revenue growth across all regions. This past quarter alone, we grew 10% together. In the first three quarters of 2017, we collectively, all of us here in the room, generated $2.4 billion more in revenue and related profit than we did last year. We're investing even more in your success in, and your growth. In the past year, we paid out more than $1 billion in PFR bonuses. We love paying PFR bonuses. Development funds, tools, and trainings. We've trained more than 15,000 of your account managers and certified engineers. And we're delivering our tools and resources digitally to help you scale. Our commitment and our ongoing commitment to the channel is unwavering. We're also investing in our brand, and the HP brand has never been stronger. In the past 21 months since separation, our brand equity has increased, and the overall value of the HP brand has risen by nearly $2 billion, according to Brand Z. Alongside innovative products and demand generation, we're creating deep emotional connections with our mutual customers, making the power and benefit of the products and solutions come to life. A strong HP brand creates increased pull and demand for all of you. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, it's not always about what you do, but how you do it. Success is built on strong corporate values. And two of our core principles are doing the right thing for the planet and being a beacon of diversity and inclusion. And we're not just making a difference in our own company, we're challenging our suppliers and the entire industry to do the right thing. We collectively need to represent the diverse communities that we serve and ensure environmental sustainability for future generations. Now, I do want to spend a moment 
on all the terrible natural disasters that have happened in the past couple of weeks, from Hurricanes Harvey and Irma to earthquakes in Mexico and storms in India. We stand with the communities we serve. We have thousands of employees and partners in the Houston area, many of whom were impacted by Harvey and suffered damaged or even destroyed homes and businesses. Our own Houston campus was under five feet of water. Employees and partners came out in force to support one another and the community at large. And as part of our support, last week my staff unanimously decided to hold our next World Partner Forum in Houston. They're going to be really uplifted by having just this amazing world ecosystem together in Houston next year. We'll learn more about that later in the program. As I shift to looking into the future, I firmly believe that change equals opportunity. And it's clear there is an accelerating and disruptive change all around us. So the question becomes, how do we capture the opportunity together? By understanding the digital transformations shaping our future world, we can determine where to invest today to help our mutual customers anticipate and create solutions required for their end customers. Let me paint a vision of the future with the three largest trends transforming the world. Firstly, rapid urbanization. Secondly, a changing workforce. And third, an accelerating pace of innovation. First, let's look at rapid urbanization. In only 12 years, there will be 8.6 billion people on our planet putting a huge strain on all of our resources. By 2025, 42% of the world's population will live in cities, driving 50% of global GDP growth. 1.8 billion new consumers will join the world economy. And 95% of these new consumers will be in emerging markets. I visit China and India at least once a year and have witnessed their ongoing digital transformations. I was, India just, I was in India just last month and if you want to talk about change, that's a country undergoing massive transformation. For those of you not familiar with digital India, Prime Minister Modi is massively building out infrastructure and digitising government services to empower every single citizen about 1.2 billion people. We talk about reinventing a company and perhaps industries. He's reinventing an entire nation, not by building for today, but by digitally creating the future. He's transforming absolutely everything, from healthcare to banking and public works. He's leapfrogging current systems and skipping straight to a digital future where everyone has increased access and productivity. Similarly, you're seeing countries like Brazil create their first national digital strategy. And even established digital countries in Europe and the Americas are investing in next generation technology to meet the demands of rapidly urbanizing centers. So why is rapid urbanization important to the channel? Because people and businesses are in smaller spaces with greater efficiency needs and are shifting from owning things to an on-demand, service-driven economy. Urbanisation is not only driving population density growth, especially with millennials, but it's changing what we buy, how we buy it, and how we consume products and services. Today, we have rural, suburban, and urban spaces. We are now seeing a new type of geographic composition that they've coined smart cities. So instead of living in a three bedroom apartment, people will live in a technology enabled studio that turns into three rooms like this yo-ho that allows your bedroom to turn into a living room 
with the touch of a button. Increasingly, we're intertwining not only our personal and work lives, but also blending the physical spaces in our homes and our offices. Let me give you another example of why urbanisation really matters. In these same smart cities, brands like Uber and Airbnb are driving the sharing economy, which is expected to reach $335 billion by 2025. The sharing economy is based upon peer-to-peer -peer activity of sharing access to goods and services, and it's changing absolutely everything. Like most of you, when I turned legal driving age, the first and the only thing I wanted was my license and a car. Now, when Christoph's son Max turned 16, he wasn't interested in getting a driver's license or a car. Instead, he asked his dad for his credit card to open an Uber account. How's that for changing behavior? You see, for Christoph's son, on-demand services made life better over the hassle of owning a car. And I've got to tell you, the channel and all of us need to build stronger muscle here. What started out as groceries and razors delivered to your door has now become a full-blown service-based economy. It's no longer about buying and selling boxes. It's about improving the end-user outcomes and having experience-centric solutions that provide the customer what they want, exactly when, where, and how they need it. Contractual-led buying is dramatically accelerating. Service-led business models like HP's Devices as a Service are enabling customers to reduce costs, shift CapEx to OpEx, and have the flexibility to scale, all customized to the customer's specific needs. For partners, this is a digital transformation opportunity where you can provide many services for the device from birth to burial, all while generating recurring revenue and improving the end user experience. Businesses are at an inflection point and our opportunity is to help them optimise their operations and their investments. Rapid urbanisation is changing what we buy how we buy it, drastically shifting towards an on-demand, service-driven economy. Now, in addition to rapid urbanisation, the second major trend driving growth is a changing workforce. First is a changing composition of the worker population. And the second thing is the rise of what we call one life, where work and personal lives fuse together. For generations, boomers have been the largest group in the workforce. But in only a few years, 2.6 billion Generation Zers will, will overtake them. And Generation Z is like no other. 67% of them are willing to relocate for a good job, more than any other group. And these tech-savvy workers are more likely to start up their own businesses and hire others. 77% of them believe doing good should be a central part of their daily business. These employees eloquently embrace the notion of one life. There is no separation of personal and professional lives. It's all one single identity. For them, mobility is essential. Connectivity, a given and design a must. For our partners, a changing workforce requires you to adapt to entirely new buyer's needs. A device must be powerful enough to crunch data spreadsheets and vanquish aliens in gaming. All of this done securely and with IT manageability. So how will you address the new requirements for flexibility and these variability cycles? How will you support a different kind of workforce with the rise of micro-corporations where everyone is a worker? Or what about having to win a tender based on your sustainability record or how diverse your team is? If you haven't strategically thought about these issues yet, I would suggest you need to. 
because the changing workforce will demand it. It's not only the workforce composition and their needs that are changing, the entire notion of work is changing with the rise of what is called the gig economy. Does everyone know what I mean by the gig economy? It's, it's not about gigabytes, that's what I first thought when I heard it. It's the way millennials and Gen Zers work these days. In the olden days, we used to call it freelancers or temporary workers. Uh, now workers take a gig whenever and wherever they wish. And the workforce powering the gig economy is growing five times faster than the rest of the market and already contributing more than $1 trillion to the economy. Organisations are hiring temporary contractors based upon skills needed to fulfil a specific project, capitalising on the benefits of lowering overhead costs. Young workers love the flexibility and the variety that this provides them in their lives. As workers' demographics and even the meaning of work change, one life becomes a reality every day. The devices and solutions we use across both print and personal systems become more personal and more important. Whether it's battery life or compute power, whether it's flexibility or mobility and managed services, all of these things increase. Now, we've talked about rapid urbanisation and a changing workforce. The third driver of digital transformation is accelerated innovation. As we all know in this business, the pace of change is exponential. It's not linear. In 10 years' time, your phone won't be 10 times more powerful, but a billion times more powerful than they are today. The smartphone that's in your pocket right now is already a million times more powerful than the Apollo moon lander computer. The rapid pace of change that we see and that we're experiencing today will only accelerate as we move forward. With technological advancements and the rise of artificial intelligence, we are entering an era of omni-intelligence. Everything we do and experience is being driven by data and predictive analytics. AI will improve nearly every aspect of life by reducing complexity of unimaginable data. AI will unlock new business models that will change the world, creating entirely new business outcomes and value creation opportunities for partners. For instance, a combination of artificial intelligence and 3D printing enables what's called generative design, where algorithms create the best design and 3D printing enables a world where manufacturing complexity is absolutely free. Let me give you an example. If you want to drastically reduce the part weight of an, of an aeroplane wing while increasing structural integrity, machines will be able to predict the complete picture over time and create entirely new designs that adapt to change, creating things that are impossible through traditional manufacturing. Not to mention the impact as everything becomes connected at massive scale. Today, in our labs, we're 3D printing sensors directly into the fabric of the part. So that same aeroplane part could be connected and inform the pilot before a fracture is visible to the human eye. Or the bespoke need that's printed perfectly for your body that relays recovery to your physiotherapist so that they know how to adjust your treatment. AI can link to serialised parts, enabling supply chain automation and digital factories of the future. With the accelerated innovation and the rise of AI comes massive, I'm talking massive, amounts of data, which will increase 50 times to 44 zettabytes. That's 44 trillion gigabytes, and now it really is gigabytes, not gig by the year 2020. And for those of you who can't quite comprehend that math, that's equivalent to 352 million years of ultra high definition video. That makes for a seriously dedicated couch potato. <laughs> and the security threats will be far greater 
than episodes of Games of Thrones being leaked or email hacks at the DNC or last week's Equifax breach. Can you believe half the population? It will be full out security warfare. In fact, the US White House just elevated US Cyber Command, putting it on par with other military combat branches. And cyber attacks aren't just about hitting big businesses, 43% of them are targeted to small businesses. There is a more important investment an organization can make, and that starts with securing devices on the edge. We're creating security awareness campaigns to raise the visibility of the weakest link for our customers. This includes marketing efforts like the incredible Wolf series. You see, because everywhere you look, wolves are hunting for the weakest sheep. The easiest way into an organization. Let's just take a look at one of the Wolf series. Most people think hospitals are scary. They've got no idea. Hospitals just like this one might be home to some of the most advanced medical equipment on earth. But, like most businesses, they're also crawling without secure printers like this guy. Without BIOS level protection to keep it safe. Anyone can walk up and install just about anything right here. Now, that little software update just allowed me to create a backdoor directly into their network. I just changed Todd's name in the system. John, his name's Todd. He can't even keep his name straight. Now, if someone, his wife, or say anyone from his security team back at the office calls looking for him in an emergency, no one's going to be able to find him. Nobody ever suspects the printer. HP Business Printing, the world's most secure printers. series. We're now on season two at HP Productions. Uh, there, there are a series of four or five episodes in each season and uh, when Antonio sends them to me I go home and binge watch them with my wife. They're really kind of cool. You should take a look at it. But there is a scary side to this, right? That's why we are investing so much in ensuring that our printers and personal systems are the most secure on the planet. Because threats are everywhere, and you never know who's lurking in the shadows. Oh! <laughs> How are you? Yeah. I'm good. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. right up. Wow. Yes, that is uh, absolutely right. You never know who is. Uh, Lurking in the shadows. So, yes, the wolves are out there. So thank you very much for having me. And uh, don't worry, guys. I'm not here to wreak any havoc on your CIOs today. I'm here to talk about the important work we're doing on security. And I've got to tell you, it's like this ongoing battle against the bad guys. Look at what happened just last week. Crazy. Right? I know the Equifax. Yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, they breached. I uh, no, I don't know. Actually. I don't know. I mean, soon soon time will tell, right? But this is definitely a battle that, uh, that we have to win. Now, one of the reasons I was drawn to the Wolf was to help companies understand how vulnerable they really are to these kinds of attacks. So what was the most surprising thing as you started to work with HP? What did you kind of learn? <sighs> wow. Uh, well, honestly, it was the, uh, just the deep affection I found myself feeling for a printer. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had no idea I could feel that way about an inanimate object. I, uh, uh, yeah, but no, a, a device that can stop an attack in its tracks, I mean, that is uh, genius. Well, I gotta tell you, I think there's broken hearts all over the world knowing that uh, your affection lies with one of our printers. But yes. Anyway, who knew? Uh, you know, we do, however, take security 
incredibly seriously. We have an entire team of lawyers, can you believe that, an entire team Ooh. of lawyers, that tell us whether we can say certain things. Of course. They tell us, and we can make this claim, that we have the most secure printers and personal systems on the planet, and that's a huge differentiator for everybody. The lawyers allow you to say that? They allow us to say that. Hey, hey! Come out from the lawyer. Ah! And that's you. Now, I understand all these folks here are committed to helping protect their customers. They well, really are. Because yes. You know, all of us here, these are all the folks in the room here are our largest partners from around the world, and we take our customers incredibly seriously, and um, we couldn't do it without them. I know I'm talking to our customers about security all the time, mm -hmm. as are all of them. Well, look, I mean, this is the most important thing. I mean, being informed. Uh, understanding the threat uh, with this kind of education and protection, we're bound to win this uh, ongoing battle. So and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. And thanks for being part of it. The Wolf Series is amazing. Thank it's you. incredible work. Let's hear a big round of applause for Christmas. Thank you so much. I hope I got a photo of that to show my wife. <laughs> How come I can't get a hug with Christian? You know, there really is a serious side to all of this. Organizations will spend more than $90 billion on security protection in just 2018 alone. Leading with security opens new doors at a higher level of executive engagement. And all of this leads us back to today. The trends and technologies I just discussed are not just in the future. They're here and they're here right now. With the speed of digital change, our mutual customers are investing and adapting to the future digital world to meet the needs of their customers. But I've got to tell you, they really need our help. For us, their future begins right now. Right now, channel-led digital transformations are changing businesses. Right now, there are wolves at the door. Hacks and cyber attacks are on the rise. Right now, IT decision makers are embracing service-led models to manage an ever-increasing workload of variable demand. <clears throat> and right now, 90% of C-level executives believe their businesses are being disrupted by digital business models. Yet 70% of them believe they lack the right skills and structure to adapt. So right now, this is our opportunity. These digital transformations pre present the largest channel opportunity we have ever seen. It's up to each of us to build the future right now. With that, I want to thank you and welcome the <coughs> Prince of Print, Enrique Lores. <laughs>
It really means that you are starting to be in trouble. When he says it three times, you have actually two choices. One is to look for a good excuse, which in my, in my case is usually that I don't understand his accent. <laughs> or you better do it. And you probably noticed that in his presentation he said, I think it was seven times, that he wants the future to be right now. So I actually, I need all of you to show him that we really listen to him and that we understand what he meant when he said right now. So I'm going to be asking all of you, when is the print business going to grow? Right and I need all of you to answer right now. So let's do it once, please, very, very loud. When is the print business going to grow? Right now. Once more. When is the print business going to grow? Right now. Dion, when is the print business going to grow? <laughs> oh, right now. So thank you, thank you for that. And now let's start talking about the future. Some people say that the future for print is unpredictable. Who knows what people are going to be doing with print five, ten years from now? Other people will say, actually, the future for print is scary. And Christian was talking about all the bad things that have happened with cybersecurity during the last weeks. Some people lately have been saying the future of print is actually exciting. We are starting to see potential in this business. What we believe in HP is that the future of print will be whatever we want it to be. And what we want it to be is really about growth. We believe that the future of print is growth, both for us and for our partners. And this is what we are going to be discussing today. But Henry Ford said one, you cannot build a reputation on your plans. You need to build it on actions that you have already taken, on results. So before I talk about the future, let me talk about some of the results and some of the things that we have achieved together during the last months. First of all, we have achieved two consecutive quarters of growth. The business has not grown since 2011, and we together have been able to get it to grow. We have also been able to stabilize our supplies business. And this is critical because this allows us to continue investing with confidence in the future. But we have done much more. We have helped our customers to reinvent memories. We have shown them that with printing, they can connect with their not the best people in a very close way. We have made a lot of progress with our AC portfolio. We announced it last year, we have launched it this year, and we are beating our expectations in terms of sales. And we also announced the acquisition of Samsung a year ago, and we have been working to close it. Our expectation is to close it by the end of the year. And actually, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome some of the members of the Samsung team that are joining us today for the first time, still as guests. So welcome the team from Samsung. And I'd like to close with a big thank you. Thank you to all of you for the work you have made. During the last days, our teams have been collecting a long, long list of people, of partners, that have been having great performance during last year. Partners in this room that have been growing the hardware business by 2x, the supply business by three times. Partners that have been able to win the first A3 deals. Partners that have won the largest management service deals in history. But the list was so long that I decided that rather than going through all the names, I think it was much better and fair to everybody since everybody had had such a great performance this year to really ask everybody to stand up and give ourselves a big round of applause. Thank you for the great performance.
the great heritage that we have in the past and look at the future with confidence. And we believe, and we have great confidence in the future because we have a strong belief in the power that print will have to continue to be a relevant way of communication in the digital area. We think that print is a great way for consumers to share their feelings, a great way for, for professionals to communicate their ideas, and a great way for brands to communicate and to engage with their consumers in different ways. And around that belief, we have built our strategies. Our strategies are very simple. In the home space, it's about reigniting the home. It's about giving consumers new opportunities for printing, new ways of communicating with printing. In the graphic space, it's about transforming analog industries that have been using analog technologies in the past and enable them to go into digital printing. And in the office space, it's about disrupting the office. And by doing that, enabling us to grow our share, both in the categories where we play and in new categories as A3, and drive the business into services. These are the strategies that we have to grow this business. And let me start talking about what are we doing in the consumer space. In the consumer space, we have proven that it is possible to create new categories and bring new consumers to print, people that have never printed before. And this is what we have done with the Sprocket product. We launched it a year ago. It is attracting a complete new type of consumer. In fact, 55% of the users of Sprocket are below 25 years, are people that have never printed before, and we are giving them a new opportunity for them to communicate. And we have done that by shifting our focus, by focusing now on design and experience, and bringing these new consumers to printing. Because when consumers use printing, they can share their feelings in a very, very innovative way, in a very touchy way. So I think to do that, rather than me explaining what this really means, let me share a video that will probably be very close to many of you, all of you that have kids, and that will show how with printing, you can really communicate with your family in a very different way. Let's go the video.
actually, this is my son or this is my daughter. The thing is, all of us can see our families represented there. But what was even more special is that yesterday, I posted this video on LinkedIn, and like three minutes later, I got a message from my son, which is 20 years old, and he said, Dad, the video you just uploaded is really cool, but it actually made me feel much better, so thank you, thank you Antonio for that. Now, this video shows what is the intent that we have in the consumer space, and it's really, really simple. We want, we want consumers to click what they like, but we really want them to print what they love. This is our goal, and this is what we want to do with consumers. And today, we live in a hypermobility world. There are more than 5 billion smartphones in the planet. Consumers are taking more than 1 trillion photos per year, and these photos are in the digital prison. Our goal is to release them, make sure that they can see the light of sun. And we are doing that by making it very simple to print from mobile devices. And this is what the HP Smart App does. It brings the power of printing to your hand. And it's not only that, it's not only that you can print, you can scan, and the application will even, will even retouch your image, so what you print doesn't have any of the defects that it will, be, it will be got when you are scanning them. It is so simple that it's magical. But it's actually also very convenient, because at the same time that you can print and scan, you can use it to print wherever you are. So let me show now a video from India that highlights how convenient the application can be. Let's roll the video. What is the confusion mark? Why is this child always late? He's the last minute Latu. He's the last minute Latu. Always gonna get into trouble and the same is for you. He's the last minute Latu. He's the last minute Latu. Oh, where are you? He's the last minute Latu. Back to the queue. He's a last minute Latu. Last minute Latu. Another day, another time. Same story every time. The last minute Latu. He's still the last minute Latu. Santi, all you HP Inc. at one page, all in one printer. Download the HP Smart App and print from anywhere. Do homework anytime from anywhere. For all the last minute Latus in the world. Be the last minute Latu. So this can be also the son or daughter of many of us. I'm sure many of us have gone through that experience. When we talk about reinventing consumer and reinventing memories, it is not only about consumer printing. A lot of the work that we're doing in our graphics business is really about enabling consumers to get different experiences with printing. And there is probably not a better example <clears throat> that the work that we have done and we are doing with Shutterfly. Shutterfly is the leading online marketing and production company for digital printing products. They create any type of product from a digital photo album to a digital map. And they have decided and they have chosen HP as their preferred, preferred supplier of digital presence. This is the largest deal that we have ever had with our Indigo business and shows how we can offer new ways for consumers to share their feelings with, with printings. And again, there is not a better way to show that that with a bit that we have prepared with Shutterfly that shows both what they can do and also why they chose HP. Let's roll the video. memories we captured with family. There's a reason we hang them on our walls and give them as gifts. They don't just remind us of a moment in time. They remind us of what really matters. So 
it should come as no surprise that we don't trust just anyone to bring them to life. It means so much that people trust us with their memories, especially at the holidays. Everything we do is about bringing them to life with the highest possible quality. And it's why we only trust HP Indigo. Thank you for your collaboration and, and your help. This is a good transition to talk about what are we doing in our graphics business. And today is actually the first time in history that we have today in this room also many of our graphics partners that are attending also a big printing show here in Chicago. So welcome all of you. In printing graphics, our strategy is about transforming an industries from analog into digital. But about, it's about driving the power of digital printing, enabling short run and personalization. And personalization is critical because this means that any printed material, whether it is a label, whether it is a brochure, whether it is a carpet, whether it is a package, actually becomes a canvas for marketeers to use to communicate their ideas for companies to communicate with their consumers in different ways. It's actually the dream for people like Antonio and Vic that look for any opportunity they have to communicate our message in different ways. And many, many companies around the globe are starting to do that. We talked last year about Coke. We are now working with Oreo, Budweiser. Many, many other companies are using digital printing to communicate and to engage with their customers in different ways. And this is driving tremendous growth for us and for the industry. And there is probably not a better example of how this company, this opportunity is going to be growing and evolving than the deal that we announced today with Lightning Source. Lightning Source is the largest producer of books in North America. 